ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد Once again, I welcome all of you. <coughs> I continue reading from Al Mulakhas Al Fiqhi of our noble Shaykh Al Alama Al Doctor Salih ibn Fawzan Al Fawzan, Hafidahu Allah Ta'ala wa Mitta'ahu bil Sahha wa Al Afiya wa Ghafar Allah wa Li Walidi wa Li Muslimin wa Li Muslimat. Amin. Babun fi al Sadaqi fi al Nikah. Tonight, inshallah Ta'ala, in this chapter, we will learn the about the sadaq dowry that the women are given in marriage قال الشيخ حفظه الله الصداق في تعريف الصداق قال الصداق مأخوذ من الصدق لأنه يشعر برغبة الزوج في الزوجة وهو شرعا عوض يسمى في عقد النكاح أو بعده He says, as in the, he began the Shaykh by bringing a definition, a brief definition of sadaq, which is usually translated to dowry, D-O-W-R-Y. says, the word dowry refers to a kind of compensation specified in the marriage contract or after concluding it and is to be given by the husband. Uh, also, Sheikh, you mentioned something that is not translated into the English. She said, it is taken from truthfulness, because that shows a, a given indication that, uh, that the husband is truthful as related to this marriage, and he's uh, he has a desire to go, you know, on being truthful in this marriage. Now, أما حكمه فهو واجب ودليله الكتاب والسنة والإجماع. As for its ruling, the Sheikh said it is obligatory for the husband to give the dowry. If a man wants to get married, then he give a dowry to the woman that he's about to marry. He says it's an obligation. It's obligatory. And the proof to that is from the Quran and the Sunnah and the consensus of the scholars of the Ummah. And he began this from the Quran is the ayah for in Surah An-Nisa وَآتُوا النِّسَاءَ صُدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْلَةً فَإِنْ طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا And give the women that he wants to marry their bridal gifts graciously but if they give up willingly to you anything of it then take it in satisfaction and ease وكذلك لفعله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يكن يخلى النكاح من صداق وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لأحد الصحابة التمس ولو خاتما من حديد الحديث المتفق على صحته بين الإمامين البخاري ومسلم من حديث سهل ابن سعد وهذا في قصة الواهبة المرأة التي أتت وواهبت نفسها للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لكن لم يرغب في نكاحها فقال رجل أنكحنيها يا رسول الله فهذه هي القصة قصة الواهبة Also because of the hadith or the action actually of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, all of the marriages of the Prophet ﷺ, they have dowry. The Prophet ﷺ gave dowry to his wives. And also the Prophet ﷺ said to one of the companions who wants to get married, he said to him to get a dowry, to give this woman a dowry. But the story tells us that that man, he said he don't have anything. Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, 
find something to give to the bride as a dowry, even if it is an, an iron ring. And this hadith is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, on the authority of Sahil ibn Sa'd, in the well-known story of the woman al-Wahiba, this woman that she came once, while the Prophet sallam, he was among his companions, and she came and she wants the Prophet sallam, to marry her. But the Prophet sallam, he let her know that he has no desires to marry her. Then one of the companions said, O Messenger of Allah, shall I marry her? Or marry her to me? Then the Prophet sallam, he said to him, what do you have to give her? The man said he doesn't have anything. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, give her, meaning as a dowry, even an iron ring. التمس ولو خاتما من حديد. قال الشيخ وأجمع يعني الشيخ الفوزان حفظه الله وأجمع أهل العلم على مشروعية الصداق في النكاح. Likewise, in addition to the ayah from Surah An-Nisa and the action of the Prophet ﷺ himself and this hadith that is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, Rahimahullah. In addition, all Muslim scholars agreed that it's uh, it is legislated that the, the uh, dowry it is legislated, and uh, the, the 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 groom should give a dowry to the bride. No, which is a man give it to the woman. No. هذا بما يخص تعريف الصداق وحكمه. This is now we learned what, what it means, the dowry and its ruling. أما مقداره Okay, as for the legal amount of dowry. What is the legal amount? How much to give? قال أما مقداره فلا يتقدر أقله ولا أكثره بحد معين. فلا يتقدر أقله ولا أكثره بحد معين. فكل ما صح أن يكون ثمنا أو أجرة صح أن يكون صداقا وإن قل أو كثر إلا يقول الشيخ صالح حفظه الله إلا أنه ينبغي الاقتداء بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه إلا أنه ينبغي الاقتداء بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه بأن يكون في حدود أربع مئة درهم وهي صداق بنات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما جاء في حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها في كتاب النكاح عند مسلم في صحيحه رحمه الله As for the legal amount of dowry it has no specific minimum or maximum it is not specified of there is okay nobody can tell you or oh, there is a minimum that the dowry has to be no less than this and has to be no more than this. There is no minimum and there is no maximum for it. Whatever is valid to be given as a, a price or a wage is valid to be given as a dowry, regardless of its amount. Still, he says, the best way is that you adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in everything. And he said if someone wants to do his dowry be the best dowry, then he has to give that which the Prophet ﷺ he used to give because he, to follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ regarding dowries. And that the dowry should be about 400 dirhams. Okay? So 400 dirhams. And as you remember... The, uh, the dirham at that time used to be from silver and the dinar used to be from gold. So when they say dirham, meaning is a, is a silver coin. So it's a, like a 400 uh, silver coin. Some 400 silver coin. And uh, that one dirham is equal to like two Almost three grams of silver. Almost three grams. It's like 2.975. They mention here in the book. One dirham of silver equals to 2.975. So it's the dowry here 400 times 
uh, this is like almost 1200 almost 1200 grams sound like 1100 995 maybe or something like that okay no This is the same thing, the like also, the dowries given to the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The dowries that were given, this is a similar dowries that were given to the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatima, Ruqayya, Ummu Kathum, radiyallahu anhum ajma'een. Qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, huh? at this time أما مقداره فلا يتقدر قلنا هذا قال شيخ الإسلام بتيمية رحمه الله الصداق المقدم إذا كثر وهو قادر على ذلك لم يكره قال الصداق المقدم يعني يعطى كله دفعة واحدة إذا كثر وهو قادر يعني الزوج قادر على ذلك لم يكره إلا أن يقترن بذلك ما يوجب الكراهة من معنى المباهات من معنى المباهات ونحو ذلك فأما إن كان عاجزا عن ذلك كره بل يحرم إذا لم يتوصل إليه إلا بمسألة أو غيرها من الوجوه المحرمة فأما إن كثر وهو مؤخر في ذمته فينبغي أن يكره لما فيه من تعريض نفسه لشغل الذمة انتهى كلامه رحمه الله تعالى من ال لا تشغلوا أنفسكم بهذه الأمور يا شيخ جزاكم الله خير كما في الاختيارات الفقهية كما في الاختيارات الفقهية نعم he mentioned شيخ فوزان he mentioned the statement of شيخ الإسلام بن تيمية رحمه الله in his book الاختيارات الفقهية he says still as related to the amount of the dowry can someone give a lot or give that's what the Shaykh al-Islam mentioned now he said if the dowry given is much you know is a, is a big number or in the value it is not deemed you know macro this, the, the testable or as long as the, the, the groom is able to afford it so if someone, for example, wants to give 10,000 dirhams, it's okay. As long as it is not a burden, become a burden on the groom. And uh, as long as he afford that. The sheikh is going to mention later on how uh, some people, they go overboard according to customs and traditions, not according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that when a man wants to marry, they are like, you have to give this and give that and you become a custom even though they don't take in consideration that this person have money or not they, he can afford or not if a man can afford yes mashallah he, can, he wants to give a million dollars it's okay he has it but now some people in some area they have a custom they're like listen this is how it is you don't have the dowry well go somewhere else don't get married hey right now so that's why he said, if the dowry given is much, it is not deemed detestable as long as the groom is able to afford it. Unless the large amount of dowry is offered for detestable purposes such as boastfulness, showing off, and the like. Now it becomes not good to do that. Because he just want to boastful, you know. They want to they wanna show off that she was given more than other girls in her age, in her quality, in her level. Okay? However, if the groom is unable to afford such a large dowry, it is detestable for him to present it. So he cannot say, I will give this or accept this, knowing that he cannot do it. He cannot afford to give it. Moreover, such a matter is viewed prohibited, actually, if the dowry cannot be attained except through begging or such like prohibited means. 
if the amount of dowry is much, meaning a large amount, and it is deferred to be paid later, sometimes they do it like that. Say, I'm giving 10,000. I give you 2,000 right now or 1,000, but the rest I give it later on. Okay? He said, if, if the amount of dowry is, is of a large amount and it is deferred to be paid later, it should be deemed detestable uh, also. Why? He said, due to the difficulty caused to the groom by the liability burden, because now he's liable to do it and he's become a burden on him. For example, he says, look, uh, I want to give this dowry. He chooses to give a large amount of dowry that he, he doesn't have. And now he become a burden on him. As the Sheikh is going to mention later on, he become a burden on him now, and it's and he will affect the relationship and the marriage because he will be looking at her like, man, how can I pay you now? You see? So he will have something in his heart towards the wife because he chooses to say, hey, $50,000, no problem. It's okay. As some, some, some uh, countries, that's what they do. They put the dowry so high like that. Not just uh, forty or $50,000. And also, I don't know how much gold and, and a car and, and an apartment. Huh? Yeah, and the man, Miskin, he's like, okay, yeah, it's okay, I'll do it. But you give me like a couple years, right? They said, yeah, we give you five years to do that. Now all these five years, now he's thinking about that. You see, it become a burden on him. So Allah salamu alayhi wa قال الشيخ صالح الفوزان حفظه الله والخلاصة أن كثرة الصداق لا تكره إذا لم تبلغ حد المباهات والإسراف ولم تثق الكاهل الزوج بحيث تحوجه إلى الاستعانة بغيره عن طريق المسألة ونحوها ولم تشغل ذمته بالدين وهي دوابط قيمة تكفر المصلحة وترفع المضرة In summary the sheikh he says given a large amount of dowry is not deemed detestable or disliked as long as it is not out of boastfulness and extravagance and it does not burden the groom causing him to ask others for financial help and such alike all right in addition a large amount of dowry is not deemed disliked so long as it does not burden also the groom with heavy debts now he's going to go and get debts to pay the dowry okay these are valuable regulations and criteria that ensure well-being and eliminate the harm. قال الشيخ صالح حفظه الله ويتبين من خلال ما سبق أن ما وصل إليه الناس في قضية المهور من المغالات الباهظة التي لا يراعى فيها جانب الزوج الفقير والتي أصبحت صعبة المرتقى في طريق الزواج أن هذه المغالات لا شك في كراهتها أو تحريمها خصوصا وأنه يكون إلى جانبها تكاليف أخرى من شراء الثياب الغالية الثمن والمصاغات الباهظة والحفلات والولائم المشتملة على الإسراف والتبذير وإهدار الأطعمة واللحوم في غير مصلحة تعود إلى الزوجين لا شك أن كل ذلك من الآثار والأغلال والتقاليد السيئة التي يجب محاربتها والقضاء عليها وتنقية طريق الزواج من عراقلها. الشيخ says according to the above, okay, when you're talking about the dowry and if it's a large amount uh, and how it is to be dealt with, if the groom is can afford it or he cannot afford it, he says according to the above it becomes evident that exaggeration okay, and excessiveness and extravagance in demanding large dowries are undoubtedly deemed de- disliked and detestable or even prohibited, the Sheikh. They may reach the level to be even prohibited. Now, 
He says, this is because the man in such large amount of dowry does not consider the condition of a poor man. For instance, a poor man come, has sound aqidah, good manhaj, good akhlaq, but still they're going to turn all that down and like, hey, got $50,000? Nah. No, this is, this is what it is around here. So this is how it is, you know. You don't know where you've been. This is how it is around here. All right? Uh, in addition, so he said to the poor man, and so it has become a major obstacle in the way of marriage. That's why you find that those such countries and such societies would they do this instead of adhering to the sunnah, you find a lot of youth are not married. Men, young men, they are not married. 29 years old, still never get married. 34 years old, still never get married. 39 years old, still single. Why can't afford? The same thing. Find many women in their 30s, late 30s, not married. Why? Because dowry. You know. And the ulama, of course, Alhamdulillah, Shaykh al Baz, Ataymin, and all the ulama, Fawzan, they have valid fatawa, Alhamdulillah, to incite the people to adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet and to make things easy for the young man who wants to get married, especially if those men have taqwa, have deen, not to hold on to the customs and traditions. This is how it is. Her mother got this large amount. She get to get a large amount. We're not going to accept no less than that because what the people are going to say about her? Like she's cheap like that. Other girls are getting the big large amount and our daughter don't. La, la, la. She's not going to hear about that. And they cause what? Whenever somebody come with a good religion, good akhlaq, aqidah, they turn him down because he cannot... Huh? pay those dowries and then years go by the girl she's still single now nobody wants to marry her because now she's in her late 30s okay and you know what that bring about a lot of depression anxieties and I'm not talking about some of them even they result into haram or yadibullah no He says, in addition, there are many other unnecessary, not, not only the dowry, in some societies and some villages and countries, yes, the dowry is so high, $20,000, 30 40 more or less, okay? Now, that's not the only thing that that poor man has to worry about. On top of that, in addition, there are many other unnecessary marital expenses, such as the purchase of expensive clothes and jewelries. They're going to say, look, you're going to give, buy her this top-line clothing and buy her mother and her father and her brothers and her sisters. Yes. Okay, and jewelry too. The dowry, the clothing and jewelry, gold and this and that. Holding expensive wedding receptions and banquets. No, they, even them, they says, look, this is how the walima is going to be. It's going to be in this place, this hotel, whatever. It's expensive. And you're going to hire this, what they call them? The, the, the catering, catering services. Huh? Whether they from Decatur or from somewhere else. <laughs> People, yes. <laughs> Caterers, okay. They're like, no, we want this one. That's what we want. They come with a menu. Roasted lambs. And this and that. I'm like, subhanAllah. More expensive. Expenses now. In fact, such matters involve nothing but lavishness, extravagance, and wastefulness. Usually, People go there, and not to forget about the fact that they may be mixing with Ayyadu Billah and, and partying, and it turns to a party with Ayyadu Billah. And no, that food is not even eaten. It's to waste. They throw the food, they throw the ice creams and the cookies, and it's just a waste. 
all of that so that the people say, wow, she got to Walima in this Marriott. And you see the lamb was just on the table. Nobody even eat it. Look how much stuff. Just, they just throw a lot of stuff. And they, they boast with that. They think like they did something good. Which is all these things is not from the deen of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh he says, This is the, this all these things will not bring benefits to the spouses themselves, and undoubtedly, uh, such matters are considered among the burdens and obstacles and bad traditions that must be avoided and eliminated to clear the obstacles standing in the way of marriage. Now, and that's true, these are some customs people hold on to. They're not from the deen of Allah, they're not from the sunnah of the Prophet. The Shaykh Harut Ta'ala, he told us the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to learn the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything. Since we're talking about marriage and especially the dowry and the like, then the next chapter is going to be about the walima. Hmm? Walima al urs Okay, the walima, how is the walima supposed to be and all that. This is, this is what the people, they need to learn, both the husband and the family of the bride. So they don't go to extreme, okay? They don't go to extreme just to, to please the people, what the people are going to say about us. What, what are you saying? Now what? What are you going to do the walima at what? Where? What are you going to do? La, 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 la. Can't do that. Our daughter, people have to to, thought, to talk about her marriage for years. Come on. It's going to be in a Marriott. It's going to be in a rubber tree. I don't know where. It's going to be here and there. And it's going to be in newspapers. It's going, we're going to put it everywhere. This is our daughter. Our only daughter. So you become like boasting instead of doing what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال وفي حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها مرفوعا أعظم النساء بركة أيسرهن مؤنة روى أحمد والبيهقي والحاكم وغيرهم لكن هذا الحديث فيه كلام لجمع من أهل العلم منهم شيخ الألباني رحمه الله ضعفه في مواضع من كتبه في الضعيفة وفي صحيح في ضعيف الجامع وفي إرواء الغليل وكذلك قال عنه ابن عثيمين رحمه الله كما في الشرح الممتع في سنده ما فيه أي نعم دين الشيخ يمنشن ديس حديث حديث في عائشة The most blessed of women are those with less expenditure meaning in dowries, marriage those who have less dowry and, and living and the like, okay? However, this hadith here that is collected by Imam Ahmed and Al-Bayhaqi and Al-Hakim and other than them, you will find that the ulama of hadith, their statements about this hadith, we, we select for you the statement and the gradient of and the comments of Shaykh Al-Albani, the muhaddith, the great Imam, Al-Muhaddith Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, who have done a great uh, service for the for Islam, for the Deen of Allah, especially the Sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rahimahullahu rahmatan wasi'ah. He he says that this hadith is weak, as he mentioned it. We mentioned to you three references: al Da'ifa, Sisla al Da'ifa, Hadith number one thousand one hundred and seventeen, al Da'ifa, and also the Da'ifa al Jami. Hadith number 962 and Irwa al-Ghalil, Hadith number 100, no, 1000 actually, 928. 1928. Also, Sheikh Al-Uthaymin, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, in Shrah al Mustaqna, he says, when he mentioned this hadith, he said that in its Sanad, mm, that which uh, uh, make the hadith not sound. نعم وقال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه ألا لا تغالوا في صدق النساء 
فإنه لو كان مكرمة في الدنيا أو تقوى عند الله كان أولاكم بها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم امرأة من نسائه ولا أصدقت امرأة من بناته أكثر من اثني اثنتي عشر أوقية وإن الرجل لا يغلى بصدق بصدقة امرأته حتى يكون لها عداوة في قلبه حتى يكون لها عداوة في قلبه وحتى يقول كلفت فيك علق القربة أخرجه النسائي وأبو داود أو أنا منشنت يو حديث uh, about the حديث we just mentioned actually there is another حديث that شيخ الألباني said حديث is باطل you know it's not it's void of authenticity and everything باطل حديث أعظم نساء أمتي بركة أصبحهن وجها وأقلهن مهرا أي نعم حديث باطل يقول شيخ الألباني رحمه الله شيخ شيخ صالح الفوزان also he mentioned a statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه who said Do not go to extreme concerning the dowries of women. Do not go to extreme concerning the dowries given to the women. For if it, if it represented honor in this world and piety in the sight of Allah, because people that think like this is what it is, we give more, that's even better. He said, if this is the case, the one of you most entitled to do so would have been the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Umar said he meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not marry any of his wives or conclude the marriage of any of his daughters for more than 12 uqiya for more than 12 uqiya as a dowry and an uqiya you remember the uqiya this we 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 learned this in the in the what in what chapter what In what bab? Nahta Nasir. What chapter? The Uqiyya. Huh? Zakat, Ahsant. In the Zakat. An Uqiyya equal to what? You remember? Hmm? Forty dirhams. One Uqiyya is equal to forty dirhams of silvers. mean 119 grams of silver. Okay? That's one uqiyya. So here, what's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be given? 12 uqiyyas. Okay? Same thing when you did like 400 dirhams. Okay? Alhamdulillah. So this is uqiyya and dirhams and the like. It's like when you look, for example, like the quartz and the what? The gallon and... huh? the ounce paint what do you call it pint yeah the pint which I don't even know what it is pint what's the pint huh a quart half of a quart 16 ounces a pint no we have a khtilaf huh it's one eighth of a gallon And a gallon, how many ounces? Huh? Let's go back to this to this chapter, alhamdulillah. Guys don't know. I thought I'm the only one who don't know. Now I feel better. A lot of people don't know, just like me, alhamdulillah. So the pint, huh? And the quart, and the ounce, and the gallon, and the what? A quart is one quarter, yes. Uh-huh. So the pint is the half of a quart. That's what it is. Yes. The pint is the half of the of the quart. It's the eighth, one eighth of a gallon. Okay. Now let's go back to what I was reading, right? Now, verily... The man, Umar says, verily the man may be overburdened 
with the dowry of his wife until there could, there could be an enmity toward her in his heart. He, say, he says, Sir, he said, he said, Verily, the man, meaning here the husband who gave the dowry, who gave a large amount of dowry, be overburdened with the dowry of his wife until there could be an enmity toward her in his heart, and he may even say, I have been demanded to get everything, even the hanger of water skin to you. You see? I mean, I gave everything for you. Whatever I have, and I gave it. I know. قال الشيخ الفوزان حفظه الله ومنه تعلم أن كثرة الصداق قد تكون سببا في بغض الزوج لزوجته حينما يتذكر دخامة صداقها قال الشيخ ولهذا كان أعظم النساء بركة أيسرهن مؤنة كما في حي عائشة وتقدم أنه ضعيف فتيسير الصداق يسبب البركة في الزوجة ويزرع لها المحبة في قلب الزوج الشيخ says from this you should know that when a person is asked to give a large amount as a dowry, that may become a means for him to hate her, for that husband to detest and dislike his wife whenever he remembers that dowry, how much he gave. Because some men, they be like that. They're like, subhanAllah, 40,000, I could have buy a house. I could have start a business. Right or wrong? And uh, or if he still have to give, I don't know how much he gave, and he still have the muakhar as they call, something that is deferred for a long run. And on top of that, can you imagine if that woman have issues and have problems? And no, no one is free from those issues, right? But the shaitan is very tricky. He be looking at her like, Subhanallah, I just gave fifty thousand. You can even give me a cup of water. This is a 50,000 breakfast. You see what I'm talking about? The man be thinking these things. I gave all this dowry and come to a house like this. Huh? I gave $50,000 and all the jewelry and I, and, I, and I buy clothes for your mother, grandmother, your sisters, father, brothers. Now you're giving me this attitude? You're talking to me this way? So he said, that's why he says the, uh, the uh, extravagance in dowries may drive the husband to dislike his wife. Whenever he recalls the huge amount of dowry he had to give to her, you see, the sheikh, he said, that's why the, those women uh, who did their dowries are less they have barakah, is a blessings. Even though we mentioned the hadith earlier that is weak, the Imam al-Albani ta'ala mentioned that. But he said that brings mahabba. You know, because now the man is not thinking about that burden. Okay, he's not thinking about that, that burden. And he brings love in the heart of the husband towards his wife. أنا. قال والحكمة في مشروع الصداق أن فيه معاودة عن الاستمتاع وفيه تعزيز لجانب الزوجة وتقدير لمكانتها عند الزوج. Now he mentioned now the sheikh the hikma, the wisdom behind the dowry being legislated for the woman. He says and this is a right for her. Since now the man he is going to fulfill his desires with his wife. In addition, the dowry is considered a sign of honor granted to the wife, showing that she is respected and highly esteemed by her husband. Amen. So here once again, a person should be... Muslims, we should be upon moderation, which is the right path to do what is right. Not to to be negligent, like some people, they want to go and get a CD. 
Yeah, they used to get married with one tape. Listen to this tape. That's your dowry. Yeah, Give it a, a whopper. That's is your dowry. A sandwich. That's your dowry. What are you talking about? If you have money, you got to take into consideration, you know. But don't go overboard the other extreme. You know, the only way you can marry this woman, okay, I don't know what. 300 ounces of gold and 500 of silver, $20,000 up front, 30000 in five years from now, an apartment in 10 years from now in her name. Yeah, don't go to one extreme or the other. Learn the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and do your best. And if you have more, give more, alhamdulillah, without resulting into those things that the Shaykh he mentioned. No lavish, no boasting, showing off, no extravagance, and the like. And don't do it because this is the customs, our customs. Well, you don't make wudu according to your customs. You don't pray dhuhr, seven rak'at, or two and a half according to your customs. You pray four according to the sunnah. You make wudu according to the sunnah. You fast according to the sunnah. You make hajj and umrah according to the sunnah. Well, marry according to the sunnah. Don't marry according to whatever they want you to do, you do it. Because some men are like that, or whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. I gotta do it. I gotta marry this woman. I gotta do it. Gotta... And then you become a burden on him later on. No, do what is right. Talk to them. Tell them, Yeah, Akhwan, Zakumullah Khairan. This is the son of the Prophet. This is what it is. This is what is that. Now, and as for those customs, they have to change. Yes, keep in mind that not all customs things are haram. Al-Adam Muhakkam, we have a qaida of al-usul, al-Adam Muhakkam, and I'm Islam taking consideration of the customs of the people. But not every customary thing, every ada, every, you have to be taken in consideration. Look at the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and do what is right. If you don't understand, ask one of the ulama. Alhamdulillah, say, hey, don't, don't rush into making decisions. Have to any. Be patient, be easy. Ask the ulama, Ya Shaykh, this is my condition. This is how much I make. Alhamdulillah, I'm able. And this is the woman I'm about to marry. This is the environment she lives in. Okay? They have some customs. Can I, Shaykh, just ignore everything? Or should they be close to what, according to their customs? All of these things has to be taken into consideration so that you do what's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also you do what's good for you, what you can afford to do. So you be happy, she's happy, her parents are happy, and the under like. Not like now you're like, yes, no problem. How much? Yes. Her cousins too? I have to buy them something? No problem. How much is that? 20000 up front? Yes, no problem. A car in her name? No problem. And later on, two weeks later now, you're like, what happened? Can't. Nah, you become a burden for you. No, up front, try to talk, alhamdulillah, but let the sunnah talk for you. Say, let's do it according to what's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's do it according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. We're going to stop here, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to continue. Uh, we, we didn't finish from this topic yet. we we'll continue it in the next uh, class. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslimun kathira.